Hi everyone, myself Diksha, student of BE Chemical Second Year. I'm working as a summer intern under Professor V. Kumaran under supervision of Danny Raj Mishra. Here I'm going to present my internship topic on which I've worked, that is sperm cell movement analysis, basically a male infertility analysis. Let's begin. Before going deeper into the sperm cells analysis, we should know why we are going to study this. We know that reproduction is the process by which the whole universe is surviving. But behind reproduction, there is a process called fertilization which results in reproduction. So what fertilization is? Fertilization is the union of sperm cell and the female egg results into the production of a fertilized egg called chicode. But this doesn't is seem simple as it is. Here are many factors which results into infertilization. Here we studied about two factors. First, the female infertility and the second one is male infertility. I am going to study about male infertility and the factors behind that. In order to determine the male infertility, we do two examinations. First, the microscopic examination and the second, microscopic examination. In microscopic examination, we do calculations like volume, liquefaction, time, pH, viscosity of the sperm cells that are ejaculated from the male panels. But in microscopic examination, we determine the sperm count sperm motility and the sperm morphology so let's study about this sperm motility which i am going to study first the sperm motility is divided into different categories the first category in which it is divided is sperm with progressive motility sperm with progressive motility means the sperms are moving straight from one field to the other Second, sperm with non-progressive motility means the sperms are moving but it's just oscillating from one place to other. It's not going straight. And the third category which is sperms that are motile means the sperms are almost dead. They don't do any movements. In order to determine the total motility of the sperms, we have a formula called sperm motility equals to sperm progressive plus non-progressive sperm motility. From this, we determine the total motility of the sperm cells. The recent analysis of the WHO shows that if the motility of the sperm cell is near about 40%, then it can definitely result into the fertility. But if there are more about 80% of the immortal sperms, then it will definitely result into male infertility. Here is the picture showing the difference between the normal sperm motility and the abnormal sperm motility. Let's study about the seven analysis, how sperms are moving and what we are going to conclude. Basically, semen is a fluid consists of the sperms and the seminal plasma. For our experiment, we get the data from the multimodal video dataset called Vism. In this dataset, the samples are provided for 85 different people. We get a sample which shows something like this. This shows the movement of the sperm cells. We get this by capturing a video by placing the sample under the microscope. After that, we want to analyze how many sperm cells are here, how many are dead, which are moving and which are not moving. In order to calculate that, we have different methods. Here are the methods in order to determine the sperm motility. First, we use the photographic method, second, the light scattering method, third, the laser beam method, fourth, CASA, and fifth one is the optical flow. Basically, CASA and optical flow are more precisely used. 
CASA is basically designed for the sperm analysis. But nowadays, we are moving toward the optical flow. Why optical flow? Optical flow have many advantages of over the CASA method. First, it gives us the non-invasive analysis. Non-invasive analysis means that the video captured, we don't have to analyze the sperm cells at present. We can analyze at any time. Second, higher spatial resolution. Optical flow provides us the high resolution power in order to determine each and every point of the sperm cells. Next, flexibility and customization. We can use this sperm cell analysis by optical flow at any condition, at any place because it provides us refined data. So, we use the Python codes in order to determine the salmon analysis by optical flow. Here we have the different methods to determine the optical flow. First, let's understand about the optical flow. Optical flow basically is a pattern of apparent motion of object between two consecutive frames caused by either the movement of the object or camera. Here, our camera is still and the objects are moving. We have two different methods. First, sparse flow and dense flow. Sparse flow basically gives us the corner views, but the dense flow gives us the presentation of each pixel of the image. So we are using the dense flow method. In dense flow, we are using the Gunnar framework method which used for optical flow analysis. In this method, we determine the pixel values at every point and compute the magnitude and direction. After that, we can visualize this in the HSV scale which definitely separate the images from the illumination. Here is the syntax provided and now the results. From the optical flow, we get this video as a HSV scale video which provides us the results. Second, we get the cuber plots after optical flow which gives us the vector flow of each pixel in each frame. From this, we can definitely calculate the movement of the vectors and after that we will proceed to the sperm cell sample. From the cuber plot, we can calculate so many things that we can imagine. First, we calculated the positions and after that the magnitude direction simply from running the codes. After that, we use this graph to determine the sperm motility. How can we do that? We can do simply overlapping the cuber plot with the original videos and then it will definitely give us the vectors which are related to the sperm movement and which are not. This will help us to determine the sperm motility. Here we can determine the average velocity for each frame which shows us the overall motility of each frame. From the overall velocity of each frame, we can compare different different samples and determine their motility. So, the sample with higher velocity will definitely have a higher motility and definitely results in more fertility chances. In conclusion, we have the chart. This chart represents what are the things that we can get from the optical flow of sperm cells. First, the position and magnitude and direction we directly get from the codes. After that, we can calculate the velocity for each frame and from the velocities, we are able to get the trajectories by overlapping the graphs with the original video. From the trajectories, we can definitely analyze the linearity and the cur curvacity of the sperm cells and the vectors. From the linearity, we can analyze the progressive motility and non-progressive motility. If the sperm is linear, then it have a progressive motility. 
if it's curved then it's non progressive and finally we can correlate this with fertility so here is the conclusion from the optical flow and cuber plots we can determine the magnitude direction and then calculate other things what we want by super superimposing the cuber plots we get the sperm analysis and their movements the number of moving and non moving vectors can also be calculated which is in future studies thank you once again